All right, I was going to show you guys the difference between a CP4 and a CP3. I don't have one apart, but I can pretty much illustrate this um, pretty well so you can understand why the CP4 fails and the difference between the CP4 and a CP3 fuel pump. If you have a 2009 and up Jetta, you have that pump in your car. If you have a diesel, um, the Duramax diesel between 2011 and 2016 has a CP4. And also the Ford, I don't know that they've ever changed it. Uh, they have CP4s in their 6.7 liter and they fail often. And they're on the Ford, uh, I believe there's no way to actually get the CP3 to fit in the cavity, but on the uh, Duramax and also on the Volkswagen, you can convert it to a CP3 and it will actually you know, save the life of your car. So it's worth watching this video. Okay, here's how the CP4 works. It basically has inside the pump, it has a, like a camshaft that looks sort of like this. And as this thing rotates, it has like a roller, like a roller lifter. If you know what a roller lifter looks like, a small roller on the end of a little piece, a little piston that looks like a lifter. And it looks sort of like that. The roller is actually a little bit larger in proportion um, to what I've drawn here. But what there, the problem with these is there's, there's rolling resistance on this. And so if any type of debris, if you ever ridden a skateboard, you know, and you hit a little rock, you know, if any little bit of debris gets in there, what can happen is if it ends up on the side of that roller, that piston turns sideways and then starts to wear off on the cam. And within a very short period of time, the uh, fuel pump fails. So it's actually a design problem. Some people say if you run really clean fuel, stuff like that, you can eliminate the problem. Um, I don't think so. I think that it doesn't really take very much for that thing to turn sideways. And because there's so much rolling resistance, it's like you said, if, I, if, I'm, if you're riding a skateboard and you hit a little tiny rock and you know how it just stops, well, that will happen inside here with a micro piece of something and um, turn that piston sideways and then cause it to roll uh, slide on the cam instead of rolling on the cam and it just you know wears a groove right in the middle of that little guy right there and uh, wears it out very quickly so in other words if you had a larger wheel let's say you had a really really big wheel on there um, and you were riding a skateboard with like like 10 inch tires on it your chances of uh, hitting a rock and going over falling off of it right or, or less because you have less rolling resistance so that's the problem with the cp4 and let me explain the cp3 how it works we'll go look at one in a minute but um i want to show you the difference of how they work the cp3 has instead of having one piston like the cp4 has one piston in the volkswagen two pistons in the duramax uh, the cp and there's a lot of travel so it moves up and down a lot and it has an aluminum bore versus a steel bore uh, the cp3 has a steel bore so let's take a look at it the cp3 has like almost like a crankshaft if you can see the shaft on this how it has an oblong section in the middle and the shaft goes straight through that's what's inside of this is I would call that like a connecting rod, this blob here in the middle. So all this causes, all, all, what this is, is like a little blob here that stays on that shaft. And as this shaft rotates, that blob kind of goes like this in this shape. It kind of goes in a, in a circle like that. Okay. And what these pistons do is they are uh, they're on little flat spots on that blob, okay, that goes around like this. And if you can imagine, it does that motion. So inside there, there's a lot of surface area. There's no place for uh, a failure inside here. 
and it's a very small amount of movement versus this one here the piston goes way up and down okay this one here it only goes up and down a little bit but it has uh, the same amount of volume because it has three pistons versus two or one and that thing's moving around like this okay and this piston is sitting on that flat spot so the only movement is the this thing going sliding this direction on that the bottom of that piston and the pistons only moving up and down let's say about this far versus about that far you've got a steel bore a steel piston on a steel bore versus a steel piston on an aluminum bore so aluminum wears out quickly and once that aluminum starts to wear a little bit it makes it easier for that piston to turn sideways there's no place for a failure here this piston cannot turn sideways it it, it does it could spin around all it wants and it's still as long as it's sitting on that flat spot which it can't move from it's only moving around like that if you can imagine that blob in the middle is doing this motion right here and the piston is just barely going up and down so you have three of them and there is less resistance going on in here so even if the fuel if the fuel lubricity is less okay um it it has less movement so it can't wear as quickly now these can fail if you get like really bad fuel um and stuff like that but it's very uncommon for them to go out um and it is a kind of an expensive part but it's worth changing out if you change this out on your car more than likely what people have had happen is pretty good success and no more problems so let's take a look at a 80 uh, cp4 pump and see what they look like so again the big difference is is one sort of like a crankshaft and a little kind of like a that blob is kind of like a connecting rod going around the shaft okay the other one's like a lifter and with a roller on the end of it they can easily turn sideways that has no way to keep it in the same position so this is a cp4 pump out of a volkswagen and i'll show you how much the the cp3 is already installed in it but you can see here that's an aluminum housing okay and they're all made by bosch and uh, this has the single piston which would be inside here and it has like a little like a camshaft inside here and it has a like similar to a roller lifter that's inside here and there's like I said there's nothing to keep that piston going straight so if a little piece of debris gets inside and hits the side of that roller it's kind of like a skateboard you hit a skateboard on hit a rock on a skateboard when you're a kid and what happens that wheel just stops and then it turns sideways and it starts to wear the cam in the middle and there's nothing to stop it from doing that um on the other one there's really nothing that can happen it just goes around like this that blob kind of goes around in a circle and the piston kind of goes up and down a very little bit and it actually slides so like on this part of my hand so again if i had my hand was the blob and you figure this is like the crankshaft the pistons on here and the only thing it does is slide side to side and go up and down a little bit so it kind of goes up and then it goes around and it goes down it slides this way kind of goes up so there's very little movement inside the cp3 so that's kind of how this is what a cp4 looks like you convert it on a vw you have to bend this line it's probably the hardest part of the job there's an adapter that goes here and it's very large it barely fits in there um, so on your duramax there's enough room for them to convert it to a cp3 again did i say cp4 oh, this is a cp3 um the cp3 conversion on the duramax is not really a problem the pump is very expensive but um, they can be rebuilt there's people that rebuild them because they have a steel bore and they can replace the pistons with a new style piston or they put a sleeve inside a steel sleeve inside 
and rebuild the pumps. So there's people that do that. And the, the CP4s, no, there isn't because it has an aluminum bore. All right. So this will fit in a Volkswagen. It's very, it's a little bit difficult to do, but it's worth it. Once you do this, um, pretty much your problems are over as far as fuel system goes. Um, and the same thing with the Chevy, uh, if you change it. But unfortunately, from what I've read, and I don't know, maybe somebody else can tell you different. Um, I've heard that the Ford does not have enough room in the, in the engine cavity for this to fit. So, um, there probably is not a fix for the Ford and pretty much it's a ticking time bomb when this thing's going to go out at some point. A lot of people say that, you know, it's because, you know, of the fuel. Um, and it, yeah, it is, it is because of the fuel, uh, but you really can't have enough filters in there and there isn't anything holding that roller from turning sideways. So all it's going to take is just anything that could get that roller to turn sideways and you pretty much will wipe out your fuel system. What happens is that roller gets sideways. It starts putting metal shavings into the fuel system. You wipe out all your injectors and then it goes and it goes through the return, goes into the gas tank, okay, and uh, fills up the gas tank with metal shavings. And those metal shavings stick on the magnets inside your lift pump inside the tank. And if you have a secondary pump, like this car has a secondary pump right here, um, it, the metal shavings get inside there and get stuck on the magnets. And it ruins basically all the pumps. You end up with metal shavings in the whole system and you have to replace all the fuel system on the on the car and on a F Ford it's pretty darn expensive to do so um, that's why I don't own any of them the 6.7 uh, they have that problem uh, it, it, you can fix it on this car and on the Duramax once you do that pretty much bulletproofed out um, so anyway that's a little bit about that CP3 in the high pressure fuel system on the this is for the Duramax, Ford, and the Volkswagen. Like they all use Bosch pumps. I'll talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Let's see your comments on that. Hopefully, you don't get rid of your car. The best fix is just to do this, and you're done. Talk to you in the next video.